Amen. It is so good to be with you, Oakland City Church. It is an honor and a privilege. My name is Evelyn Perez. I was born in Guatemala. I came at the age of two. I immigrated, came through the desert, and landed in the Bay Area in San Francisco, California. And what a great place to have grown up. If you guys are familiar, when you're in the Bay Area, you get the street smarts real quick. I knew right away that this, you know, this was, I was young, but I knew it was different. The language was different, and I was trying to figure things out at the age of three or four. I started school at the age of four, and I remember just kind of feeling lost all the time. Always feeling, some of you guys may heard, have heard this, this phrase, ni de aquí ni de allá, which means neither from here nor there. However, I will say that now, Years later, I have stepped into fully knowing that, yes, I belong here and I belong there. And I'm grateful because God has been so faithful in my life. And I want to share a little bit about my history with you. So my family is from a small village in Guatemala. So you have to drive six hours out from the city of Guatemala to get to where my family is from. This summer, I, I had been praying about it for a really long time. I said, I, I want to go back. I want to meet with my great uncles, with my great aunts, and learn so much of that history, which I knew was already there, but I, I didn't just pick up and call. And plus, my great aunts and great uncles in the village, you know, they didn't pick up their phone or like their Facebook. I, had to, I knew it was important for me to go back and visit. I brought along my two sons, Andres, who is 13, and Fernando, who is 10. And we were on a journey. We were on a journey to get to know more of our history, more of the richness of what my family history brought to us. And so as you see here in the picture, this is a picture I took in, uh, in San Marcos, Tejutla. That's where my family is from. And right here uh, to the right, you see uh, my great grandmother in the red, my grandmother in the red sweater, my great aunt in the blue, and my other great aunt in the gray. These are such great women of faith. And let me share a little bit about my great-grandmother. She was a woman who had six children, widowed, and she, you know, we say now, she was a gangster. Like, I see her and I'm like, my great-grandmother was such a resilient woman. She knew that she had to raise these six children on her own, so what she did is she with what she had, the resources that she had, she started making soap made out of lard, made out of coal, a couple other things. We're gonna, I'm going to leave it right there because I don't want y'all taking it away, taking this recipe away. But she took it into the town weekly. Out of that, uh, lard, that soap made out of lard and coal, she started bringing in an income, bringing in an income. And she was able to raise her six children on her own. She was able to buy land. To, that to this day is still there. And she was able to also not only care for her family, but know that it was important to invest in the kingdom of God. And so she was one of the first women in all surrounding villages to help plant a church. When I think about that, I, I say, wow, I know and I am sure that the prayers of my great-grandmother and my grandmother are with me today. And I don't take those for granted. And so as I see these women, they may have not, maybe they didn't go to this prestigious seminary, but they were women who had PhDs in prayer, who understood the importance of community, of prayer, of worship, not only just with singing, Singing is great, worshiping is great together, but with their life. My great-grandmother didn't read, didn't write. But speaking to a great uncle when I was here this summer, he shared a little bit about their faith journey. He said, we all came to Christ, and we knew it was important that we share the good news of the gospel. And so I said, Theo, ¿qué hicieron? What did you do? How did you do it? How did you go to the other villages? Well, we stood. We stood overlooking Similar to that, we, we stood and, and could see all of the land and the mountains. And he said, Evelyn, it was simple. We packed our bags, had our wives, our kids with us, and we walked 
for two, three days. We brought tarps, and if it would rain, that was fine. We would just tell the people in the village, hey, could we stay here, maybe in a stable? Could we stay here overnight? And it was okay. Maybe we got a little wet. We were fine. And they shared through the testimony of their life and what God had done in their life, the good news of the gospel. Many of them didn't know how to read or write, or there was many indigenous languages. My great-grandmother spoke mom, um, an indigenous language in Guatemala. And I'm so grateful to know now that there is this legacy that my great-grandmother left behind. And so to this day now, when I think, okay, God, I am here, I know that God has a purpose for why he has brought me here to the Bay Area, and I'm grateful for the opportunity you all give me this morning to be able to share the story of my history, of my grandmother, my great-grandmother. God has been faithful. And I'm here to tell you that the same way God has been faithful in my life, I know God has been faithful in your life. And so today, we're going to be looking at Psalms 146. But let me pray as we get started. Mi buen Dios, te doy gracias. Gracias, Señor, por tu presencia. Gracias, Padre. Porque estamos aquí como tu cuerpo. God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your presence, for your love, for your mercy. God, thank you for the opportunity that we have as your children to come together and praise you. And God, speak of the stories and testimony of what you have done in our lives. God, we love you. Lord, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive your word this morning. I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 So if you have your Bible, I'm going to have you um, come with me to Psalm 146. So as I'm reading this psalm, the first thing I see in Psalm 146, a psalm of praise to our God. And I think, hmm, yes, psalms, a song of praise, a declaration of praise and exhortation, where we see here, it says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. The psalmist here calls upon his own soul, and he's also calling upon others to praise the Lord. And these here, Psalm 146 to Psalm 150, it's a series of five psalms that we call them the hallelujah psalms. Hallel, which is in Hebrew, praise, verb praise, and Yah, a contraction of the name of the Lord, Yahweh. So hallelujah, praise the Lord. Can you guys say hallelujah? hallelujah. Yes, okay, you guys are awake, amen. All right, I, don't, I have to see the mass and I'm like, okay, you guys with me? All right, good. Yes, and so I say praise the Lord. How many of us? through the great joys or maybe the difficult circumstances in life have found ourselves in the Psalms. Because I know I have. I know there have been some very difficult times in my life when I said, I don't have the words to express how I feel. But this Psalm, God, you get me. You get me when I'm, when I'm feeling happy and you get me when I'm going through heartbreaking moments that bring me to my knees. These psalms do that for me, and I know that they do that for you too. They give words to some of the emotions we cannot speak. You know, growing up in the church, let me tell you a little bit um, about the church I grew up in. I grew up in a, church in, um, in a church in San Francisco, Iglesia del Pacto Evangelico, right on 24th and Mission. So if you guys are familiar with, the, familiar with the mission, that's where I grew up, and we would gather every Sunday a majority of the congregation was an immigrant congregation, but we came, in, we came from all over, all over the place. El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico, Nicaragua, from everywhere. And actually, I'm just going to give a quick shout out to my girls right here. They're from Nicaragua, El Salvador, raised in the, the mission also. We had a strong, woo woo, yes, thank you. I'm so glad they're here this morning. We had a strong community of people that came together. And you know what made it so special? is that we were a community. We did life together. We would break bread together. Many of the families that were coming in, they didn't know how to register their kids in school. 
um, navigating language, reading documents. And many times, maybe it wasn't, we're going to do this specific Bible study every. No, it was simply going over one another's house, saying, how can I help you? How are you doing? Do you need help with your children? I'm grateful to have experienced that strong community in Iglesia del Pacto. And one of the things that we would always say as we would walk in on Sundays, we would prepare similar to this. We would start our worship. And right before, we would say, y a su nombre, and the church would say, Gloria. And to his name, glory. And it was without fail every single Sunday. We knew that we had gathered, and no matter what was going on, God deserved our honor and glory. A su nombre, Gloria. Because, right, how easy is it to give God praise and glory when everything is going well? But what about those moments when things are very difficult and we feel like things are falling apart? Let's go to verse 3 and 4. It says, Do not put your trust in princesses and human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Yeah. Can we agree here that the greatest of men are men? And when I say men, no shade to the men. This is all of us, right? And they are subject to death. And here when it says... We do not put your trust in princesses. Let's not put our trust in the power or the influential. Because from what we know is sooner or later, we will be let down when we put all of our trust and hope in men. Time after time again, we see it when we put our trust in leaders, in a politician, in influencers, They let us down. It's, and it's not that they're different than us. It's actually that they're like us. Because how many times have we let people down? But the one who is everlasting and is our steadfast truth is God. And he is the one who will not let us down. Ashes turn to ashes, dust turn to dust. How narrow the margin of life, Iglesia, church. Our everlasting truth is that God always remains faithful. Do we all agree? Yes, we see it in our lives. We see the power of God when we trust him, when even though our circumstances don't look like they're going to pan out, But when we can worship and say, God, we trust you through those things, there is something powerful that happens in our faith. In 2015, we all know that real estate in the Bay Area is so, it's, it's crazy. It's really hard out here to buy a home. I had a home in 2015. It was a five-bedroom, three-bathroom home, beautiful on a hill. I said, oh, I made it. This American dream, I got the fence, I got the little, the beagle, the dog. We're good. I'm good. I'm set. And I wasn't, I wasn't sharing any of my testimony at the time. I wasn't doing any of what I, anything of what I do now. But I was good. I was comfortable. And you know, sometimes you never know what life can, what circumstances life can bring you to. I lost everything. I lost the home, and I won't be afraid. I, I'm, not, I'm not embarrassed. I'll be very transparent with you, church. I had cars repoed. Everything was gone. And I found myself saying, God, at that moment, I said, God, will I make the decision here to trust you? Or will I decide just to be angry and say, you know what? I'm done with this God thing. I'm done with the church. And I said, you know what, God? I've seen you faithful before. I'm going to trust you. And what that did to my faith is God strengthened me through that moment. Now, did things work out the way I thought they were going to work out? No. Actually, they worked out even better. God has been faithful. And I stand here before, before you letting you know that 
I don't know how you came in through those doors this morning, but I do know that you have a God who we can trust, who is true to his promises. Let's look at 7 through 9. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow. But he frustrates the ways of the wicked. You know, again, I'm reminded that, you know, that, that part we would start with in our, in our Latino church on Sundays when I was a kid. Y a su nombre, Gloria, to his name, Glory. We would also say, y su pueblo, and his people. But more than his people, it was like his community and his people in victory. And we were reminded that even though maybe a lot of us, we were living in apartments with two or three families, we knew that we had a victorious God, and that's all that mattered. Every Sunday, a su nombre, gloria, y su pueblo en victoria. And I believe that to this day, that is still very much so. We give him glory, and we are a people that live in victory. Amen? Amen. Recently, there was a, there was a webinar hosted by CT Magazine. Some of you guys may be familiar. And this webinar was um, titled The Vital Role of Churches in Latino Communities. And Dr. Angel Marcial stated this, which, wow, impacted me. He was talking about the church, the Latino church today. He said, the future of the church, and I think this is important, is a bilingual church that not only speaks the powerful language of the gospel, but also speaks the language of pain and suffering. The bilingual church is what I envision can present a powerful alternative, a church that will shine in the last days. This church full of the spirit, this united church preaching the good news of God like Jesus in the book of Luke, this is the church that is going to make the blind see who will pick up the fallen, who will restore what has been tossed to the ground, that will raise the dead, we can tell our communities that this gospel of power, a gospel of change, a gospel that creates hope in people. I, I believe that when I, when I was reading these psalms, that they bring so much hope for us who have been at the margins. And church, I believe that we are called today at this time and this place with purpose. How are we living it out? I, I'm currently going to seminary. And one of the greatest questions that I had was, I, I love the church. I love, I love y'all. I love the church. There were so many questions that I had. And I said, as we leave the four walls of the church, how are we demonstrating with our lives that we are a people of hope, bringing hope to those that may not have it? How are we doing it? Because if it's just on Sunday, that's, I, I, I know that at the heart of God, that's not what it is as I read these verses. And you know, these verses point to the ministry also of Jesus. We see that through these verses, Jesus lived a life where he sat with, um, as Howard Thurman in his book, with the disinherited, with those with their back against the wall. That's the Jesus that we know. And so, church, we're going to go to that next slide. Right? It says here, as we see the life and ministry of Jesus, he upholds the cause of the oppressed. He gives food to the hungry. He sets the prisoners free, gives sight to the blind. 
lifts up those who are bowed down, loves the righteous, watches over the foreigner, sustains the fatherless and the widow, frustrates the ways of the wicked. That's the Jesus that we have. Amen? And I know that here today, some of us in seasons of life have felt lost and God has given us the eyes to see. Or maybe we felt heavy and God has given us that freedom. One of the things that we do um, in, our, in our church, um, I led worship for some years, and we would sing, Hay libertad en la casa de Dios. And we dance and, and, and praise with all of our beings. There is freedom in the house of God. There is freedom in Jesus. And next slide, please. Oh, Sion, que el Señor reine para siempre, que tu Dios reine por todas las generaciones. Aleluya, alabado sea el Señor. The Lord reigns forever, your God, O oh Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. And I have to say, I, I prefer it in Spanish because there's an exclamation point to everything that is being said. And I'm like, were they Latino? Because, I, because I'm like, yes, praise the Lord. It's not like praise the Lord. No, praise the Lord. <laughs> he reigns forever. Hallelujah. And in all languages, hallelujah is the same. And so this morning, church, I want to encourage you through circumstances you may be going through in life right now, trust in God, worship God through it. God is faithful. And if he has been faithful in the past, he will continue to do so today and furthermore. So to all the generations that are to come and for you all, let us praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that in all seasons of life, we can come to you and trust, God, that you are our steadfast truth, that your promises for your children are real, and that, God, you aren't like man who lets us down. God, you are faithful in our lives. May we choose to praise you every single day of our life. May we choose to give you glory. A su nombre, Gloria. God, thank you for your love and for your mercy. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen.